So we will go more into depth when it comes to budgeting. The number two thing that we are going to be talking about in this series um, that we're going to touch on today, but going to in-depth detail on is debt. So debt in today's society. Okay, data shows that consumer debt is more than $15 trillion in recent times. So average consumer owes about $100,000 in debt. So there are different kinds of debt. So there's revolving debt and non-revolving debt. So Everyday debt is either non revolving every debt is either non revolving or revolving. So what you need to understand is you know what what your debt is, what kind of debt you have. You need to you know you need to understand what a revolving debt is. Revolving non revolving debt is things like your mortgage which you borrow or your car loan, your student loan, your personal loans, um, which is one set amount, one lump sum, and then you're paying on that debt for a certain amount of time. Then there's secure debt and unsecured debt. So secure debt is debt that is that has a collateral or an asset to the lender to use. The number one debt that I would say that is a secured debt is your mortgage. It's secured by your house. Your car loan is secured by your car. So, you know, those are examples of secured debt. So then there, you know, understanding your debt is one of the most important thing that you need to understand. For each debt, you should know the following. You should know the total amount of the balance. You should know the interest rate of that debt that you're paying, the monthly payment, and the estimated payoff date and estimated payoff amount. So when you're looking at your budget or you're looking at your finances um, on a monthly, quarterly, semi, semi-annual, yearly basis, you, you need to know how much you have left. So you know how much you're paying off that. Once you understand your debt, you can start paying it off um, with in different ways. Now, if you have credit card debt, which I do not believe in at all, I believe in credit cards. I just don't believe in credit card debt. We are going to discuss that later. So there's different ways to handle credit card debt. So that brings us to our third topic. Our third topic is credit. Now, debt and credit are two different things. So Although they're related to each other, I put them in two separate categories because there's a few things that we need to talk about when it comes to credit. Credit refers to your ability to borrow. So um, we in America, in third world countries, borrowing is not as accessible as us, as it is in first world countries. So one of the things about my immigrant family is we're able to come here and buy a house. In most third world countries, you can't borrow to buy a house. You have to have all the money before you can get get something. So people are stuck in that level. They're never able to move up and and, and do parts of their budget. So one of the best things in in America, in my opinion, is credit, which is your ability to borrow. Understand what credit is. Credit is the ability to borrow. So, you know, you want to make sure that you understand what that is. And and that is a gift. Credit is, a, is, is, is like a license, you know. So when you have a car license or a gun license or any type of license, there come responsibilities with it. So, you know, I think of credit as a license. So my credit report is is a picture of my license to, cre- to credit. So wh- that goes on to what the one more thing that you need to look at, credit report. Your credit report is a full list of all your current, past, everything, uh, your monthly payments, your negative collections things, bankruptcy if you filed, everything that's going on in your credit since the beginning of your time of starting credit is there. So um, also they might have your employment history. So this is what lenders use to decide if they wanna lend you money or not. So one of the things I also believe in is spending other people's money so I can you know, benefit from that, is benefit from spending other people's money. So this is the way you do it, is through credit. So one of the things that you need to make sure is that your credit report is babysat. You babysit your credit, you check your credit report, you understand what's on there, you know what's happening there, and that then it comes to your credit score. Your credit score is the number between 300 and 850, that's the essential number rating, which tells the snapshot of your responsibility for your debt. So here is how your credit score falls poor. It it falls between poor and excellent. So depending on how responsible you are with your credit license, then 
that will depend. So if you're not responsible, you'll be more towards the end part of it. If you're very responsible, you can be up in the seven, eight hundreds, and then you will get the lowest interest rate on a loan, on a mortgage. You will get uh, lowest interest rate on a car loan and anytime you want to borrow credit because you are credit worthy. So you have to have a credit history to be credit worthy. I cannot stress the importance of a credit score and a credit report. It is one of the most important things in your credit toolbox, credit, in your financial toolbox. Credit is the one, one of the most important things in your financial toolbox. So, you know, I'll give you an example. When my dad moved to this country, he is an immigrant, so he believed in paying for everything cash. He paid for everything cash, so one day he wants to get a car. He wants to get a car, but he wants to get a nice car so he can budget in um, paying a car payment with, with the car. Guess what? He could not get a car for a good interest rate. They were charging him usury interest rate because he was in his 30s and he had no credit. So no credit is also a bad thing. So he had to pay a very high interest rate to start getting credit and kind of realize what it is. So a good score can literally make or break you in terms of your payment. It can be thousands of dollars hundreds of dollars within time, tens of thousands of dollars within your lifetime when it comes to credit worthy, yes. So you need to remember that credit is a license and we will discuss that further later on when we go in depth with credit. The fourth thing you need to look at is insurance. So unfortunately, this is not one of my favorite topics. Insurance is a large part of all of our budgets, but we need to make sure that we have insurance as an emergency just in case. It, you know, we are glad to have insurance when something happens. In general, buying insurance involve, it involve paying another company a monthly premium to cover the liabilities for an emergency. So there are different types of insurance. Health insurance is, has become one of the most costly things for us lately and um, definitely um, a, a large part of our financial responsibility. Homeowners insurance and renters insurance. Down here in South Florida, homeowners insurance is crazy. We definitely need to do something about it. We have auto insurance, life insurance, disability insurance. Some of these things can also be um, offered by your job, so you definitely need to look into that. There are instances where I definitely believe you need life Life insurance and then there's instances where I believe you might need life, life insurance. We'll definitely go in depth about that. The fifth thing we're going to talk about um, to round off this half of this of this podcast is savings. So you know savings it's it comes also in different facets of things. So the first savings I think that you need to have is an emergency fund. You know having an emergency fund helps you to cover unforeseen expenses. So you want to make sure that you have, you know, a, 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 typically I would say six months worth of expenses saved up in an emergency fund just in case, in case you lose your job, in case you get sick, in case something happens, you know, so you definitely want to have that security. So an emergency fund is kind of like insurance that you're paying into um, in, in an account. So it's another kind of insurance. Uh, so, you know, there are different types of savings. So emergency funds is one. Then we can talk about different things. So there's goal savings where it might be a dream vacation or, you know, a nice car that you might want to buy. Those are also part of your goal savings. Um, in one of my prior videos, you heard me talk about um, your goals, um, your pot pots with your goals, your goals, your goal pots. So, you know, you have different pots for different things. There's also one of the big ones that I need to, we talk about is down payment on your home. You know, you need, that's definitely wants to be, needs to be one of your, your savings goals. So there's no magic secret number for all these things. These are things that are up to you. These are conscious decisions you take control of when you are in control of your finance and your money. You know, so when it comes to savings, the big goal is the best way to reach where you want to go. You want to divide that by the amount of, um, of what you want to save and then by month to reach that certain goal. So if you have a timeline on your goal for your savings, that's how you would do it. You would say $10,000 divided by 12 months. What is that I'm trying to save for, um, you know, that vacation. So I need this much money each month to put in that pot. 
And trust me, make sure you have a pot for it. Don't mix your pots up because when you do that, it gets confusing. And then you tend to think that you have more than you, do, you, you don't. But, you know, you need to make sure you specify your pot. So that's our first five topics on um, the things that we want to talk about financial literacy and financial wellness. Um, we're definitely going to round it out with the other five topics that we're going to talk about. On the next half of this, we're going to be talking about the next five topics. So Sharon, the Modern Savvy CPA, and this is the end of my first video.